Hello, Oracles. Well, what can we expect from Tesla stock this week? Of course, we had earnings last week. We kind of have that three-day window where you really don't want to trade anything with the stock unless we get this nice pullback and then maybe you wanted to add some. But typically, there's that three-day rule where you just don't touch the stock until you wait for everything to settle. So now here we are going into Monday and we have passed that three days. So what can we expect? We do have that gap that is above us. We'll get into that in a minute and discuss when we're going to fill these gaps above and below, what we could potentially see with the FOMC meeting coming up, and all the other information that we have coming out. So we'll get into all of that in just a minute. All right, so as we said, there is this gap that goes above us now. So this gap goes up to 177. So I have a feeling we may end up going up to fill that gap. But if you pay attention to some of these lines that we have here, pay attention to the trends. Again, seeing the RSI at 36, I have a feeling we're going to potentially pull down into this oversold range. So we may very well come up and fill this gap above us and then end up pulling down again. I don't know if we're going to pull all the way down to fill this gap at 146 this week. But next week, we have the FOMC meeting that is going on on the 3rd and 4th. Chances are right now we are looking at a 25 basis point hike. I believe this is going to be the last hike we see. And then in June, we will end up seeing a pause. Now, the Fed did say that the pause is going to be an extended pause. So we will be looking at interest rates of 5 to 5.25% five for most likely at least the next year. Maybe a little bit shorter if the inflation ends up coming down faster than expected. However, we are anticipating, as of right now, a very extended length of time with interest rates being high. So now that does play long term, but the market does like to price in about six months out. So this week itself, we may see that bump up and then a little bit of a pullback with that hesitation going into next week's FOMC meeting. And now me personally, if you guys have been following for a while... My strategy is I put in $20 every single day into Tesla stock. I'm saving a good chunk of cash on the side as well, anticipating some of these dips. Now, if the stock does pull down below $150, I'm going to bump that back up to $25 a day because that's my way of dollar cost averaging and adding more on the dip. So what I'll do at that point is add five more dollars. If we pull down to $125, I'll move that up to $30 a day. So this is my way of taking the money that I've had stored in cash and adding at those levels. Over in my IRA, I have sold out from 150 up to about 190. I sold about half of my shares over there, anticipating this pullback. Now, if we pull under 140, I will be adding one share, 125 another one, and then I'm just going to monitor from there to be able to add more as we pull further down. I will be doing the same thing in my main portfolio as well. I'm going to be monitoring because if we pull under 125, I'll add a smaller chunk in there. If we pull down under 110, I'm going to add another chunk there as well and kind of pay attention. Now, those numbers there, I do not know when we are going to hit them. I don't know if we're going to hit them. And none of this is financial advice, but looking at the trends we have seen, looking at what has happened in the past, looking at how gaps fill, I have a feeling we are going to end up filling those gaps. At this point, though, I still do not know if we are going to fill that gap up to 262 above us before we come down to fill those gaps at 114 or not. So I'm really just kind of paying attention to how the market's going to react to this FOMC meeting next week, and I'll keep you guys posted from there. And looking a little bit further out, something that we have talked about on here as well about a potential of us just kind of trading sideways for a little while. Farzad comes out tweeting, there was a four-year period of time between 2015 and 2019 where being a Tesla investor was absolute hell. I used that time to retest my thesis every day. The last few quarters and likely following quarters are very reminiscent of that time. Don't be afraid to get uncomfortable. Elon replied to this, there have been several extended periods of flatness, followed by rapid rises to new plateaus. So for any of you out there right now wondering what's going on, why is it that we see so much positive news going on for Tesla, but the stock just keeps coming down? It seems just it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But you have to remember that this is just kind of the norm for Tesla. So they trade sideways and then all of a sudden everybody realizes, oh, wow, this really is this 
what, it, what we thought it was going to be. And then it takes off to the next level. And that's kind of where we're at. And you do have to take into consideration the fact that going through COVID, when we had interest rates at zero unexpectedly, that was amazing for growth stocks. A lot of people dumped a lot of money into margin. Borrowing money for basically no interest whatsoever was a great way for people to make some money. Unfortunately, as we saw at the end of last year, it was also a great way for people to lose a lot of money. So now anybody who did not sell during those times during last year, you have not lost anything. Just a reminder on that. You haven't lost anything until you sell. So if you take into consideration the fact that we had that kind of unnecessary bubble that came up in the last two years, and now we're back to a, I don't want to say reasonable level, but you know maybe where the stock would be trading during a bearish and uncertain time in the economy right now, we are where we're at. It is what it is, but what's going to end up happening, we may end up trading sideways for a couple of years. I've said this before. I think what ends up happening is 2025 rolls around, Tesla comes out with that compact car. They're producing them at volume. They are selling mass quantities of them, and they have autonomy solved. Now they have all of the vehicles on the road now, plus this compact car going out there with the potential for people to buy FSD and having all of that software revenue coming in as well. That, I think, in 2025 to 2026 is that moment we are going to see that jump to the next plateau. So that is what I am looking at right now as a potential. And I think with all of that, that just means that if you are wise with your money and your investments, again, not financial advice, but if Tesla is a stock that you want to play long term, and you want to figure out how to get as many shares as possible between now and the next big jump, the thing could possibly happen. You may have a lot of time between the next 24 months or so to add a lot of shares. Now, there was other mention as well to remind us that when we did see those massive jumps to the next plateau, it was in a very short window over a few weeks of time. We've seen 21 day massive runs in the stock. That's usually when it was. We saw that massive run and then it hit a plateau. So people who are trying to time the market and time all of this could be very difficult. There's going to probably be some big swings up and down along the way, but to get that next big jump that hits that next plateau, that's going to be a very short window of time that you may not want to miss. So that's why I'm just dollar cost averaging every single day. This way, if we hit that window, awesome. I've got it. I've got my shares in there and we go to the next level and then I just monitor from there. And so I think this week coming up, we are not going to be getting one of those massive jumps up to the next level. Obviously, what we saw from the information at the earnings call that we're kind of in a place where with the Fed raising interest rates, it's not going to bode well for vehicle prices and vehicle purchases just because of the fact that at least here in the U.S., people can't even afford to purchase the vehicle because the interest rates are so high. So some people can't even get loans at all because the interest rates are so high. So chances are, especially if people are anticipating the Fed going up another 25 basis points, that's going to make it even more difficult. And that's going to give us an indication that Tesla may be coming down on prices of their vehicles even more. That there then brings down margins. That then is going to bring down the stock price even more as well. But again, that is going to end up hitting a leveling out point, And we will then go up eventually from there. Chances are that will happen when the Fed ends up pivoting. So we've got some time between now and then where the stock is probably going to be maybe not our best friend if you're looking to sell, but it could be a really good friend if you're looking to buy more for low to accumulate as many shares as possible. So the other thing that we have going on this week is a lot of other earnings. We had earnings season starting last week. Earnings season is going to be going on for another two to three weeks as well. So with some big earnings that are coming out, ENPH is going to be having their earnings this week as well. And Tesla may slide a little bit in sympathy with them. That might be what ends up pushing us up to fill the gap above us. Tesla energy being so strong right now, if ENPH, Enphase Energy, is going to show some strong earnings, Tesla may ride up in sympathy with that. But again, as we have seen with other earnings, it may not be long lived. That may be a bump up and then a pullback afterwards. Some people may be using that as an opportunity to take some profits after that pull down from Tesla's earnings last week. 
That's how some swing traders play this. They saw Tesla pulling down from earnings last week. They bought in at maybe that $161 level. They're now anticipating a push up this week with some people buying back in, getting some sympathy from the end phase. That pushes them up. Maybe we get to that 177 level again. Now people are making some pretty decent profits in a very short amount of time. They'll then take their money out and we end up seeing the stock pull back down. So that may just be how this week plays out for Tesla stock. We will have to wait and see, and you can let us know in the comments below how you think this week is going to play out for Tesla. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I will look forward to seeing you this week. Again, we'll be doing live streams on Tuesday. This Friday coming up, I will not be able to do a live stream. I will be en route to my uh, race venue. I'm going to be staying overnight in New Jersey. So if anybody is around next Saturday morning in New Jersey area, I will be running my race there if anybody wants to come along. I am looking for a videographer down there. So if anybody is in the area and interested in possibly showing up there, we'll hang out. I'll buy you guys lunch if you want to do it. And you can just kind of follow me around the course for wherever you can and take some videos of me on the obstacles. My first time back in three years, so I don't know how I'm going to do, but it would be awesome to have somebody to video there. So again, if anybody is in the northern New Jersey area and interested, please just go ahead and shoot me a comment and we'll discuss it later. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Have a great one.